Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Logistics with me, Jewel Williams. And today we're to continuing our conversation on the drage business model. Now, today I'm coming with you with some information from a survey that was conducted by an agency at the Houston port. I wanted to share this information with you to give you some insight as to what other truck drivers have experienced doing drayage, how much they make and so forth. So first off, always thank you for subscribing, liking my channel and sharing my videos. I'm getting some wonderful feedback from all of you. And I want to just encourage you to continue that subscribe, like if this is your first time to my channel, turn on that notification bell so you can be alerted when other videos like this drop. All right, let's get into this conversation. So from this survey, what we have seen here, I've got some highlights. I'm not going to go over everything, but I want to go over the key points here. So what this survey showed uh, after talking to several drivers and several drayage company uh, and some port managers and so forth, they found that one, drivers who are owner operators face a significantly lower earning potential than drivers who are company drivers due to the in large part of the marketing uh, power. So what they learned is that uh, drayage owner operators are at the very bottom, usually making about $6 an hour after expenses are taking out. Okay. So that's something to think about because you want to get as much money as you can from all from this process. Now, this survey took place uh, pre, I think it was around 20, um, this survey took place around 2010, I think it was. So there's been some changes. However, it, I, uh, it gives a good baseline for you to kind of understand what's going on. All right. So one thing that they thought was they got to raise that in order to attract some decent drivers. So I'm looking at my notes here. Um, the, potential the earning potential uh for drivers is going to be is going to be influenced by congestion the less congested a port the better a port also the congestion of traffic okay so when we look down here uh on this other part of the survey gate congestion was an issue which was inhibiting uh the profitability of the owner operators so it was an incentive for companies to find ways to improve that congestion to improve the pay in order for drivers to be incentivized to come and work at the ports okay so that's one thing now they also talk about dray drivers who work for firms uh such as these typically own their own truck, but depend on the firm to organize deliveries and dispatch. It also says that uh, firms have a strong incentive to discourage their drivers from using trucks, which are unreliable or unsafe for reasons of company reputation and potential liability. So if you're going to get with a company, chances are they're going to be pushing you to have a newer truck or a truck that's reliable. So think about, giving them information about your reliability rate. How many breakdowns? Do you have a breakdown uh, maintenance plan? Do you have a tire maintenance plan? These are the things you're gonna wanna communicate when you're talking about uh, getting on with a Dre uh, company or even working with a Dre company, okay? So I wanna stress these types of things because I think it's important for you guys to understand what companies are going to be looking for when you go out there to work for them. So let's see. The next part I wanted to bring up is showing you this um, driver's condition part of the survey. Now it says on average drivers work 10 hours a day, 55, 50 to 55 hours a week. All right. Now I talked about how many hours uh, you want to work. Is that going to be a 60 hour week? Is it going to be a 70 hour week? Well, here's a survey that shows on average port drivers are working 10 hour days. And um, as you can see here, the median number, the middle number is 10.2 hours. How many hours uh, do you work per week? Um, 54. And 
It says you own your own truck. So 78% of those people own their own trucks. And it shows, uh, do you belong to a trucking company? 88 of them said, yes, they do. And then do you have health insurance? 68 of them said they did not have health insurance. That is not, a, that's a cautionary part right there. No health insurance, something happens to you, how are you going to maintain? So one of the highlights is most drivers apparently find it more beneficial to belong to a firm. A firm can serve a number of important functions that can benefit both the drivers and the port. So for example, a firm can help drivers engage in at least a modest amount of collective bargaining while a fully independent driver is forced to be pure price, uh, a price taker. So keep that in mind. Working with a company, still owning your own vehicle, you have more bargaining power than someone who just has one truck and they're going to be stuck with taking the price that is offered to them. And you definitely don't want to do that. You want to make as much money as you can. Now on this other piece that I thought was interesting to share with you, as I talked to you before, when you're calculating out how much you want to make per year and how much, how many miles you can run, as you can see here, the survey shows that the mean, meaning uh, the average is 123,000 miles per year. However, when they did the numbers of this survey, they showed that uh, the middle number, the median is 60,000. That's only 50%. So you have to ask yourself, where are they getting the other 50% of their mileage from? They must be doing it from some other uh, part, some other type of business that these drivers that they surveyed were getting their money from. And that is something you definitely want to look into. And then the final part I think is important to, out of this piece of information was what is the average length of each drayage haul? Now, yesterday I talked about no less than about 75 miles. Well, here it shows that the mean, when they averaged it out, the mean number, the average number was 199 miles. Now, the medium number, meaning the middle of the highest and the lowest, was 60 miles. So again, of 96 drivers that they talked to, um, most of them said that uh, they drive about 60 miles and the other part said that they get about 199 miles um, on average. And I, uh, I think that says uh, uh, the average length per drayage, per dray. So they also stated that they make 2.6 turns typically in a day. So there's a couple things that you want to, I want to highlight with this, this numbers right here. One, you understand how many miles you could possibly run when you do drayage. Now, if you're getting paid per load, meaning you're getting a flat rate per load, you're going to uh, not, you know, you're going to make that set amount, but you want to think about, you know, if you're driving 199 miles, how much fuel are you going to run with that? Um, what's your earning potential if you only do a 199 a day? Are you going to look for someplace else to, to make your to make up for the money that you need for the whole year? You also now understand that working in this, this drayage model that you're doing about 2.6 turns a day. <clears throat> so maximum about three turns a day. And that's in that 199 miles. So this information right here I thought was really helpful to just give you context. What can you do? What can you make? how many turns you're going to possibly get. Now, this particular survey was focused uh, on the port of Houston. So it is going to vary if you're in LA or if you're in Atlanta or if you're in New York. If I can find more surveys that were done with those ports, I'll be definitely here to share them with you. So it will give you some comparison as to what those ports look like as compared to this port. So I hope this was helpful. This is a shorter video today because I just wanted to highlight the earning potential of doing drayage in the port. I hope this was helpful. I want to ask you again to subscribe, like, turn on your notification bells, and I will see you guys on the next video. And always, thanks for watching. Be safe out there.